lo and behold, power sharing is good. And we have a lot of evidence actually in, in research across many fields that when you avoid very extreme concentrations of power in the hands of very few and with most others, pretty um, defenseless, uh, you uh, end up having a lot of negative repercussions. Uh, the power advantaged when they don't have any checks on their power tend to end up abusing their power or misusing it. It becomes very difficult to make good decisions because when you are extremely advantaged, you make it very difficult for people to voice dissenting opinions, to bring up different ideas that are not your own. And so the decision-making quality also tends to decrease when power is very concentrated. And what we also know from research, not only my own, but the research of many others, is that when you have a system in which you ensure that there's more balance in the power distribution. It doesn't mean absolutely equal power for everybody because that is just not how power structurally works. You will have different, uh, different kinds of resources that give you more or less leeway, more or less sway because power comes from control over resources that others need, need and want. So if you have um, an ability to control the access that people have to resources they desire, you will have influence over them. What we know from the research is that once a distribution comes a little bit more balanced, the system as a whole tend to be more prosperous. It is true that if you have lots of power in your hand and you kind of squeeze that power for all the advantages it can give you, in the short run, you may get more advantages, but in the long run, the system as a whole tends to improve in terms of prosperity, in terms of health, in terms of happiness for many, many more people. I want to present to you examples of quotes from high level executives I have interviewed in recent times that uh, without even knowing that this is some, these are the, some of the things that are kind of the, the basics of power sharing, they contributed. These are themes that come up over and over and over again because they're very, very fundamental. It might be a little small for you to see, but I'm going to read them out to you. In terms of clarity of purpose, clarity of expectations, one leader said, I spent a lot of time uh, creating upfront clarity uh, so that the team has a North Star, very clear help to guide all decision making, priority setting, etc. So all of these conversations you had with the team to, to, to make it clear why we're going in a certain direction. That's where another quote speaks to the same process. The team is likely to feel more galvanized towards these goals, these outcomes, when they deeply understand the why. So the reasoning, the logic for why we're pursuing something in this way. And when the why is explained through storytelling, this is another way in which sometimes you simplify a complex reality for people that may not have a grasp of all the complexity. Storytelling allows you to make that end goal more vivid and more directive for people so that they're not confused about the, the, the process. And then, you know, you have all the building up of the people. When you say empower people, what we're talking about is giving them the resources they need to execute. This is also fundamental in terms of leadership practice. And we see good leaders do this all the time. 